Hey everyone, pro photographer Ian Plant here, and I often get asked whether I have any tips for carrying around heavy camera gear, for transporting that gear to exotic photo destinations. I do have some tips, but my answers might surprise you. If you wanna learn more, stay tuned. Hey everyone, how's it going? I get this question all the time. People ask me, Ian, how do you travel with heavy photo gear? And part of what motivates this question is that airlines are getting increasingly restrictive about carry-on luggage. And people really don't want to check their photo gear, and I don't blame them. There's always the risk that your bag will get delayed or possibly even lost. In some airports, there might be a risk that someone's gonna just go into your luggage and pilfer some items. So checking your photo gear is not an option. So the question is, how do you travel with all of this heavy photo gear? And the answer is, I don't. I just don't travel with a lot of gear. I prefer to go light and to bring a minimum amount of gear with me. And this is true whether I'm traveling to a remote destination or whether I'm traveling locally. So when I'm doing landscape photography, I don't wanna be walking around with 20 or 30 pounds worth of photo gear because it's exhausting. And when you hike a few miles to get to a landscape destination and you arrive and you're just beat, you are exhausted when you get there because you've been carrying around all this heavy equipment. You don't have that much energy left for being creative. Same thing when I'm doing wildlife photography. You know, if you've got a lot of heavy gear, you're not going to be able to react in the moment. So I prefer to keep my kit as basic as I can. So that generally means that I avoid bringing primes with me. Instead, I rely on zooms. And it used to be that for a lot of types of lenses, prime lenses were preferred because they were a lot sharper. But nowadays, most zoom lenses are excellent. You're not really missing out if you're shooting with zooms instead of primes. So I use zooms all the time, and that helps keep my kit down to a minimum. And you don't really need super fast lenses anymore because you can rely on higher ISOs. And there's also a lot of great features like Adobe Lightroom's Lens Blur, which allows you to achieve that f2.8 or f4 look that you previously could only get with a really expensive, super fast lens. So here's an example. I'm about to leave on a two-week trip to Antarctica, and I'm going to be photographing a mix of landscapes and wildlife. And I'm only bringing two cameras. It's always a good idea to have a backup camera in case something goes wrong and three lenses. So this is my kit for two weeks of photography. So the Sony 12 to 24 is my primary landscape lens. And then for intimate landscape encounters and wildlife photography, I've got two Tamron lenses. One is the 150 to 500, and that's gonna be my go-to lens for most wildlife photography that I'll be doing. And then there is my Tamron 35 to 150, one of my all-time favorite lenses. It's great for intimate landscapes and closer encounters with wildlife. And for this trip, I'm not gonna be bringing a tripod. This is gonna be mostly hand-holding opportunities. So I'm gonna leave the tripod behind just to make my kit a little bit lighter. And these three lenses and these two cameras, that's all I'm bringing, they go into a simple over-the-shoulder camera bag. And all of that equipment in that bag weighs a total of only 15 pounds. So that's actually pretty heavy for me because when I'm doing landscape photography, I'm often going out with just one lens, one camera, and a small lightweight tripod. The whole thing might weigh somewhere between seven and 10 pounds at a maximum. So this is actually going to be heavier than I typically carry around, but it's still overall a very lightweight kit. But the real question is, will this gear be sufficient for my trip to Antarctica? Well, let's check back in in two weeks and find out. All right, so I'm back from my two-week trip to Antarctica. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to go to the barber before I filmed this episode. And so the question that I posed two weeks ago was, would this equipment, this lightweight kit, be sufficient for my photography needs? Well, let's take a look.
you know what? This is driving me crazy. I'm going to go to the barber really quick and I'll be right back. Well, that's a lot better. I feel like a human being again. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, Antarctica. So most of my shots were taken with Tamron's 150 to 500. That proved to be my go-to lens for most of the wildlife photography I was doing and a fair amount of the landscape photography as often the landscapes were very distant. And then coming in second place was my Tamron 35 to 150, which proved to be very useful for a variety of wildlife and landscape opportunities. The lens that I used the least was my Sony 12 to 24, which was heartbreaking for me because I love shooting ultra wide, but I only used it a handful of times. And honestly, it really wasn't that necessary. So personally, I feel that this very lightweight kit worked perfect for me in Antarctica. I don't feel like I missed any opportunities. And I think that's the number one reason people give me for carrying around these heavy camera bags filled to the brim with all sorts of equipment. They're afraid if they don't bring a certain lens that they're going to miss a photo opportunity. And I get it. That does happen. If you pare down your kit to the barest essentials, there might be an opportunity that you miss out on. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. But I'm here to tell you, if you're carrying around a lot of gear and it's slowing you down and you're tired and you're not as creative as you otherwise would be, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. So there is a penalty for carrying all that stuff. So yeah, you might miss a specific type of shot. I don't carry around a macro lens every now and then, maybe once in a blue moon, I say to myself, wow, I wish I had a macro lens, but I'm glad I don't carry around a macro lens with me everywhere I go. So I keep things pared down to the essentials and I go with the lightest kit I possibly can. So I'll do some research ahead of time so that I know which lenses are likely to be most useful to make sure I've got those with me, but I'm not going to bring around a lot of equipment that might theoretically possibly be used. I'm going to leave that at home. And if I miss the occasional shot, so be it because otherwise I'll be nimble, I'll be flexible, I won't have any problems when I'm checking in my bags with airlines, and so overall I'll be happier, I'll be able to focus on my personal creativity, and I'm going to make better photos as a result. So there you have it. It's pretty simple. My answer to the question, how do you travel with heavy photo gear, is don't travel with heavy photo gear. Just say no to the heavy bag. Instead, go light, be nimble, be flexible, and you'll be more creative, you'll make better photos. I guarantee it. I'm Ian Plant. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you guys again in the next video or maybe someday in real life. Bye-bye.